Hello, my name's Paul Stockdale from ABCPE, the site where we try and make VCE physical education as easy as ABC. Today I want to speak about energy systems interplay. We've spoken about energy systems characteristics previously to this, but today let's look at interplay because one thing I know for sure is that there will be an energy systems interplay question on this year's VCAR exam. So what is it? Well, you basically just need to know that all energy systems will contribute to ATP production during all activities. However, depending on the intensity and the duration of that activity will depend on which of the three energy systems is going to be predominant at any given time. Second dot point there is a generic statement that I'd like you to start to use as an entry into all interplay questions. And the graph there should be very familiar to you. Let's make sure that you understand uh, which energy system is going to be predominant depending on intensity and duration. So we've got a shot putter, very high intensity, very short duration, that's ATPPC system. Same thing with the high jumper. Here we don't have much information, so we need to, well, what is it? Is it the, the jump? Is it the, um, the start? Because that's very short duration, very high intensity. But is the event a 100 metre freestyle, a 200 metre freestyle? 1500, we don't know. There's not enough information here for us to answer it. Same here, uh, unless you you know what rowing is, um, you, you can't really answer it. But let's have a look at a multiple choice question based on rowing. I'll let you answer that. And because it goes for six minutes, it has to be a predominantly aerobic event. Uh, and you will get significant contribution from the anaerobic glycolysis system and only a small contribution from the ATPPC system. This one, granddaddy of them all, this is a very aerobic event. It's a long duration, sub-maximal intensity activity. And then we get to our intermittent sports, and they're a lot more difficult to classify because there's periods of rest followed by periods of high intensity. And yet the games generally, or the matches, or the events, or the bouts, go for a long period of time. So we need to drill into that a little bit more and the best way to do that is by answering questions. So I'm gonna give you a formula um, to answer these questions. I've broken that up into color codes. They're not all six mark questions. However, if you follow this scaffolding, it will leave you in good stead. So you start with a generic statement. I've already given you that generic statement, but there it is again. Then we need to discuss the ATPPC system. When is that dominant? And you must use intensity and duration to justify why it's dominant. Usually it's because it's an explosive start or uh, a very high intensity activity. Um, use data, use the prompt where you can. So then we need to talk about when the anaerobic glycolysis system is predominant. We need to talk about when the aerobic system is going to be predominant in, in the event or in the stimulus. Um, and then at the end, give an overall dominant energy system. Now the sixth mark, and there's always marks for this, is how did you use the prompt? Did you include the stimulus material in your response and did you include it often? And give you an opportunity now to have a practice at an interplay question using that formula. So here is a 12 minute run that I want you to focus on. Um, we're asked to use data, there'll be a mark for using data. I'll give you an opportunity to answer that using the formula which is on the right hand side. Okay, how did you go? Um, this is an exemplar from a, a young lady of mine in, many, many years ago uh, that we thought, that I thought was a, a six mark question. Why did I think that? Well, she starts with a generic statement at the commencement of a 12 minute run, all three energy systems work together. There's one mark. Um, talks about the ATPPC system being dominant. Um, produce ATP at the fastest rate, uh, but as PC stores deplete, uh, the energy, dominant energy system becomes the anaerobic glycolysis system. So there we've got three marks so far. Um, once oxygen supply meets oxygen demand, so she's already spoken about oxygen deficit, now we've breached a steady state. The aerobic system, four marks is going to be dominant. And use of data, 200 beats per minute, I'm giving that one. And then the final sentence there is the overall duration because it's 12 minutes, the dominant energy system must be the aerobic. I'm giving that six marks. How did you go? I'll give you another opportunity to practice another continuous event with a twist. Okay, let's go through this. 
there's our one mark for our generic statement. Now, two, three, and four marks here. The final 100, he increases his intensity. The anaerobic glycolysis system increases its contribution. That's why Sun has increased his intensity. He's got ATP from a faster energy system. Now, that system is not dominant, and that's why I put this question in here. The aerobic system is dominant. This is a continuous event that's gone for 14 minutes. The aerobic system is pumping out ATP like you wouldn't believe, but the extra ATP for the increase in intensity comes from increased anaerobic glycolysis contributions. Overall, the aerobic system is the dominant system for this event. Six marks, how did you go? Let's apply the same formula to an intermittent sport now. This one's volleyball from the 2014 exam. Um, we follow exactly the same process, but it's slightly different because it's intermittent. So, generic statement, ATP PC system. This time, because we have rest, we have the aerobic system that will replenish PC, that will remove hydrogen ions, so we can use our anaerobic energy systems throughout an intermittent sport. Repeat efforts for anaerobic glycolysis system. Finish off with the overall. Make sure we've used data. And that is a six mark answer. And the only other energy system interplay question you're likely to see is when we compare two different events. And this one's the 100 meter swim in 46.91 seconds versus the 400 meter. And what they want you to show them is that you understand that the 400 meter swim is a longer duration, lower intensity because it has increased aerobic contributions. That is, the aerobic system is dominant in the 400, whereas in the 100 meter swim, we get significant contributions from our anaerobic energy systems. Now, they produce ATP at a faster rate. The aerobic system produces ATP at a slower rate. So if you have an aerobic dominant event, or basically the longer the aerobic system is contributing dominantly to ATP, then the slower the event is going to be. Let's have a look at the answer. Generic. Talking about the 100 being anaerobic, talking about the 400 being longer duration, therefore aerobic, produces ATP at a slower rate, therefore our split times are slower. Good use of data, that is a full mark answer. Well, thanks for watching. I hope that's clarified a few things. My name's been Paul Stockdale from ABCPE. If you need more videos, more information, more help, please contact us at our website, www.abcpe.com.au. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.